Welcome to The Shooting Show, broadcast from Blaze Publishing headquarters at Leamington Spa. This week we have a pigeon shooting bonanza with an extended special from Gamekeeper's Diary star, Jeff Garrard. Right, we're off on the pigeon run again. Um, as you can see behind us here, uh, in the, there's a field of winter rape that's been, been hammered now. It's a, it's a chalky bit of ground, which is always hard to grow on. And uh, the few pigeons that we've had about us this year, they've all managed to congregate on there and they've given it a bit of a hammering. So, um, so the farmers asked me if I could go up there and try and do something because there is rape there. And they just want to let it go, but the pigeons are just stopping it from growing. So, as you can see, um, we've got the town in the background and we've got a road down the left-hand side as we look. So, one of the things I've got to do uh, before I go is I'm going to ring the local police up just to uh, inform them and let them know that I'm going to be up there, I'm going to be shooting, because the last thing I want is an armed response unit or a helicopter because someone's reported someone's shooting. So the shots that people might get alerted to. So just in case you do get a complaint, you'll know who it is. Okay, thanks very much. Yeah, bye-bye, bye. Right, that's that little job done. Hopefully that'll save any embarrassment later on in the afternoon. Um, as you can see, we're on a very bright, sunny day. The one good uh, factor in our favour is we've got a good it's probably a southeasterly wind, very stiff breeze, which is going to keep the temperatures down a little bit and also hopefully keep the pigeons moving about a bit. So uh, we better get on and uh, see what we can do. With Jeff's initial preparations complete, he arms himself with his trusty Browning and Ely Grand Prix loads. Then it's straight out to the chosen location. Pigeon population has swelled to colossal numbers and Jeff can't afford to do things by halves. He's heading right into the middle of them. Right, well we're here now, we're in the patch. Um, and my initial thoughts are, first and foremost, we've got the town about 500 metres that way. So obviously we've got to be shooting away from it. We've got a road 300 metres plus in that direction, so we can't be dropping shot that way which is all pointing that I've got to be facing down the hill at that angle. Um, it'll be good for the wind because they'll be coming across me with the southeasterly wind which is coming this way. Um, the only thing that's going to be against me is the sun, uh, but that's, uh, well hopefully we'll have to deal with that on the way through during the day. But I mean the signs are good, which normally means it's all going to go dreadfully wrong, um, but we'll uh, and build a hide, which I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, is put it actually in the standing rape um, on the edge of a tram line, and hopefully they won't be looking at that, they'll be looking at the pigeons and the decoys um, in the rape, um, which is where they're heading for. So hopefully, uh, you know, I can make a hide good enough in the standing rape that they won't take too much notice of it. But uh, we'll give it a go, see what happens. The decoy in textbooks don't tell you to set up shop in the middle of a field, but Jeff is confident in his hide and his gear. Here the Grand Prix, 32 gram, five shot fibre. Nice. There's no more time for intros if we've got a job to do, and Jeff keenly awaits his first pigeon of the day. Happily, he's not kept waiting too long. Getting the canes out down that end so they sit above the right. Yeah. 
With the first few in the bag very quickly, it's clear the pigeons aren't too bothered by Jeff's central position. This could turn into a big bag. We've only been here um, a couple of minutes and I've you know, got four in the bag, four decoys out there already, which is better than 10 plastic ones. No, but you know, because because of the area where we are, you know, th that would be the ideal hedge up there. But you obviously can't do it because of the because of the town, you know. So we've got to be a little bit careful. Despite the limited shooting angle, Jeff's finding plenty of targets to set his sights on. Another one is duly dispatched overhead. Each fallen pigeon is swiftly followed by another. This is the kind of shooting opportunity most people only get to dream about. Jeff is a pro and doesn't get carried away, sticking to safe shots and professional best practice at all times. Right, let me go put them up because that's uh, no stubs. We stop for a break to refresh the decoy pattern. Things are proceeding as planned, but there's still plenty of grey pests in the sky overhead. The job has barely begun. Without a moment's more delay, Jeff gets back to the shooting. Just come in, just This is pigeon shooting action like we've never seen it before. The pace is so frantic we even have to ask Jeff to slow down so we can catch it all on camera. That's a shooting show first, but Jeff duly obliges and gives us an update on the proceedings. Right, we've been here probably about an hour and a half now. Uh, it's about half past two now and we've had quite a few shots. I reckon we've killed about 40 pigeons and so far, fingers crossed, things are going all right. There's, there's a big flight line going to our right, which there's nothing we can do about. We are drawing some off it, but there's no, I mean, if it had been any other day, I could be shooting at them, but they are the town side, so I've just got to grin and bear it and watch them go by. But we are getting a few that's coming up here, coming up the field here towards us here, which has given me perfect shot, absolutely no problem at all. And we're, we're building up a good bag, so fingers crossed today. Um, Looking, looking good. I always like to have the uh, proper things, the real, um, the real McCoy, but um, this time of year I haven't got any. Didn't manage to get any this morning, but when I was watching this um, for the last couple of days, I did think that if, if I got into this little rate patch here, that um, there'd be enough flying over that I could get one or two to start with, which is what we've done. And um, I've built a pattern up, gradually building it up. I've had to move the flapper about a little bit um, from in front of us here to across here, but it's now drawing the birds in. And like I say, we're now, I think we're 35, 40 birds now. So, um, you know, yeah, it's going all right. Although we didn't start with any decoys, but it's going all right now. And hopefully as the afternoon carries on, it's just going to get busier. Oh, you held it on, miss. 
With the live birds steadily adding to the decoy pattern, there's plenty to keep the woodies dropping in. The odd frustration doesn't dampen his enthusiasm. Each miss is soon atoned for with a solid hit. Gamekeepers have a heavy workload, but on this evidence it's an enjoyable way to earn a living. Work though it undoubtedly is, and Jeff is providing a valuable crop protection service to the farmer. Okay. Another box, Mr. Ely. Another two birds fall from the sky as Jeff makes good use of the Browning yeah. semi auto. Halfway through proceedings, we're well on course to pass the 100 mark, which has evaded us on our last couple of days out with Jeff. Of course, it's not all about keeping score. Crop protection is a vital part of the job, and it's virtually never ending task. Jeff's efforts will keep the crops safe and the farmer happy for a short time at least. Full star meal that is. Mm. <laughs> the pigeons are so numerous that Jeff can't even grab a bite to eat in between shots. With the birds still decoying thick and fast, he has to grab his gun instead. Back to the more important things. After a moment to savour his gourmet meal, Jeff gathers the fallen birds and rearranges the pattern once more. But there's not much time to pause for thought, and he quickly loads up in preparation for the next wave of the Grey Menace. As the afternoon wears on, Jeff keeps at it. It's a big bag already, but there's no sense in stopping. We know too well that for every pigeon you shoot, there's another one waiting to take its place. We pick up the birds once more during a brief lull, in preparation for the final stint of the day. They're not coming in quite as regularly as when we started, but there's still plenty for Jeff to aim at.
With one last shot, it's finally time to call it a day. For once, Jeff almost seems pleased with how things have gone. Right, well, that's uh, concludes another day, and uh, it's been the best one of mine uh, this year. It's been a very bright, sunny day, and um, but on the on the plus side of things, we've had a good breeze, southeasterly breeze, and the pigeons are decoyed. That's a happy gamekeeper, no doubt a happy farmer too. But did we break that elusive 100 mark? There's only one way to find out, and that's to get counting. See that one there? Yeah. That's the first time I've had one of these this year. 100th pigeon. Finished up with 125. Very pleased about. Pigeons are decoyed lovely. The uh, Browning Maxes. Got on really well with it today. Uh, everything's flowed. I finally connected with it. And uh, the Eagly cartridges. 32 gram fives, fibre wads. They've performed as well. So all in all, it's been a very enjoyable day. With Jeff making up his century, we can head for home assured of a job well done. The final task is to take the hide down and pack away the gear, leaving the field a lot safer from the pigeons oh and welcome attention than when we arrived. This is Pigeon Control, the gamekeeper's way. Make that 126. <laughs> Jeff there busting the hundred, and now the shooting show news. This is the shooting show news. With the CLA Game Fair less than seven weeks away. There was success for shooting in the European elections after most of the UK's new MEPs pledged their support for shooting. When contacted by shooters, 39 MEPs said they supported shooting, while just three said they opposed it. This comes after Basque set up a dedicated website to help shooters make their views known. Basque's Christopher Graffius said there would be a similar site for the general elections in 2015. Scottish land reform recommendations are misleading and destructive, according to sporting organisations. A review group called for a limit on the area of land that can be held by private owners, as well as a review on tax exemptions for sporting rates on estates. It also suggested that Muirburn causes problems for the fire service, something Scottish land and estates has spoken out against. The Scottish Countryside Alliance said it had grave concerns about the report. More than 150 sporting lots are available as part of the NGO's 2014 auction. The catalogue includes traditional game shooting, duck flighting, rough shooting, deer and boar stalks, as well as fresh and saltwater fishing. And if you don't fancy that, there are miscellaneous lots including ferreting, falconry, gun dog training, lamping, pigeon shooting and more. All proceeds support the work of the NGO. Download the catalogue from nationalgamekeepers.org.uk. Ian Coley Shooting School hosted its first Ladies' Day of the Year last Thursday. The day provided tuition to guests of all abilities, along with the chance to use the new Caesar Greeny Siren, a new sporter shotgun designed especially for lady shooters. The main difference has been is actually the stock. Um, it's shorter, it's also slightly deeper because of the high cheekbone that most ladies tend to have. So this is really probably one of the first guns that has been designed specifically for the lady shooter. Everyone enjoyed the course which was made up of a wide mix of targets to suit every level, with many signing up to take part in the forthcoming ladies days on the 26th of June and the 31st of July. And finally, bring back the wolf, that's the message from a leading Highland organisation. The John Muir Trust said there was no ecological reason why wolves should not be reintroduced to the Highlands and that its absence had impoverished the ecosystem. Wolves have been extinct in Scotland since the 18th century. The Trust said most European countries were pleased or proud to see the wolf return. And now for something different. Nigel Farage spoke exclusively to our cameras on Friday while on a fishing trip off the Tynan Weir coast. 
We discuss the issues facing sportsmen today and the launch of a new fishing magazine. We've been throwing back in the North Sea particularly, uh, often more than 50% of what's caught is thrown back dead. And that's the point people have got to you know, get a handle on. Mm. You cannot operate a quota system in a mixed fishery like the North Sea because whatever commercial method is being used out there, uh, you know, it's very difficult to say we will just catch one species without catching another. We do not actually dictate and control uh, what fish can be caught in our seas. We've given away total control of that to Brussels. Now, I know some people watching this will say, well, he would say that, wouldn't he? But it's a, but it's a simple statement It is the truth. Fact. It's, it's a the simple truth. statement of fact. As I'm worried about that. The other thing I'm concerned about, particularly as, as we're here on the North Sea, is there is still a very big quota for sand eels. And there's a big commercial, in fact it's industrial, let's, let, let's use the right word, mm. an industrial fishing fleet catching sand eels, you know, uh, millions of tonnes over the last decade of sand eels have been taken out of the North Sea and used for? Probably fertiliser. Fertiliser. We're now living in the age of celebrity. Football is booming in this country. Mm. Why? Because we've got some big celebrity footballers. You know, I'm not a fan of all of them, but but, but you know, we have. And, and so that you know, that's what kids aspire to. Yes. They aspire to be like these people. Um, and, and so I think that's what angling needs mm. in the modern world. Well, now you're doing your bit. That's for sure. For sure. Well, I might bring a few UKIP voters to see angling. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell you what. At least I hope I will. Well, thanks ever so much, Nigel. Barney. Brilliant. Br brilliant day. Thanks, and good luck with the new magazine. Thank you very much indeed. Sea Fishing Magazine launches on the 10th of July. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been The Shooting Show.